Hello everyone and welcome to the Stout Stitch Crochet Podcast Free Pattern Friday Edition. I'm so excited to be back with you guys today. I have so many patterns to show you and I read a lot of the comments that y'all put in the last episode. I actually read all of the comments but I read a lot of what you guys were saying about the patterns and I'm really excited to see what you guys are going to do and see if you're going to make some of those. I have some knitting patterns this week. Um, like I said in the last video, I'm not a knitter, so um, I don't know how well I'll be able to explain the patterns to you guys, but at least I will have the links so that you can go to it. If you are a knitter, um, maybe you will see the picture and it might be something that you're drawn to, so you'll want to go and make it. Um, for those of you that are new, this is my second uh, episode, I guess, episode of this um, section of my podcast. Um, so I just started Free Pattern Friday, the Friday before last, and I'm doing it every other Friday, um, alternating Fridays from whenever I post my actual podcast on the opposite Fridays. So for those of you who are returning or have been here and saw the last video, um, I am posting every Friday now. So be sure you hit that subscribe button, you ring the bell so you get notifications and you don't miss a thing from me. Um, I'm super excited. Like I said, I found a lot of really fun patterns. I love doing this. I'm so glad I decided to make this a permanent segment of my podcast because I am learning so much more about Ravelry <laughs> um, because I have admittedly not been very good at it. Um, and just finding patterns in general, but it helps me be a lot more creative with the different things that I want to make. Um, because if you're like me, sometimes we kind of get stuck in that rut and we will make the same things kind of over and over again. Uh, this kind of pulls me out of that comfort zone and puts me into a different headspace where I'm looking at things in a different way and I'm like, hmm, that might be fun. Or you know, that might be something that can challenge me, which I'm always up for whenever it comes to crochet. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you guys will notice, because I heard <laughs> this loud and clear and I knew I've been needing to do it forever, but I finally got a color printer. Took me long enough, but we are there thank God. So from here on out in every episode, whether it's Free Pattern Friday or my regular podcast, all of my patterns that I print out will be in color, which I feel like will make a big difference um, in how you guys are able to visualize the pattern and decide if it's something that you want to make or not. Even if you don't go with those same colors that the pattern used, sometimes it's good just to see how the designer used it, um, what kind of colors they combine to create, or sometimes it's easier just to see the pattern in general uh, if you are able to see those colors. So first, and I'm super excited about this one because I thought it was adorable. Um, oh, this is from Sweet Oddity Art. Um, and again, all of these links will be in the description box down below. I love this pattern. I am terrible at amigurumi, but for those of you who are amigurumi lovers and it's festive and around the holiday time, I thought this was completely appropriate and so much fun and so cute. Um, so it's a baby Grinch pattern. <laughs> Um, if you follow the same link, you can also see the pattern for Max, but I didn't print that one out. Um, mostly just the Grinch pattern, but look how cute he is. How adorable is that? Um, and it gives, I mean, detailed step-by-step -step instructions. Um, Lots of pictures on how to assemble. If you're like me, I have no idea how to do any of that stuff, so I would need a lot of visuals. Um, but this is real cute. It's 15 inches, it says from the foot to the top of the head, um, with a weight four yarn, so a worsted weight yarn, and a 3.25 millimeter hook. 
Um, it does say it's an intermediate skill level. Um, so if you're a beginner or an adventurous beginner, just be cautious of that, um, especially if you haven't done amigurumi before. I will say the first couple of times I tried, I got very frustrated because I think I took on projects that were too advanced for me, and then it kind of, you know, kept me from wanting to do it, um, especially with um, that size four yarn. I know it's not very small, but I would almost even start an amigurumi project with bulky because it's just easier. Um, but your choice. So I <clears throat> also like that on this pattern, they have um, contact info. It says, if you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'll get back to you within 24 hours. I thought that was really neat that they even put that in the pattern. Um, but yeah, for this, you'll need, like I said, worsted weight number four yarn. Uh, 100 grams of the main color, which would probably be that green color, um, unless you wanted to make it in a different color. Completely up to you, your preference. Um, and then 50 to 75 grams of the accent colors. I'm not sure how many accent colors. It looks like there's a few. But it'll say all that in the pattern. Um, you'll also need the safety eyes, the 24 millimeter safety eyes. In one, it says 21 millimeter safety eye that's going to be used for the nose, which will be real cute. And then, of course, the fiber fill stuffing and embroidery thread. So there's a lot, a lot going on there. But it still looks really cute. So I hope y'all go and check that out because I think it's adorable. Um, it is a pretty long pattern though. I think it was like 16 pages, but again, how cute is that sweet little Grinch? Uh, so there's that one. Also another amigurumi, but I think I'm actually going to make this one. It's not nearly as detailed or difficult as the Grinch is, but I thought this one was kind of appropriate given the current climate that we're in. Uh, and sometimes you just have to have some fun with some of the situations that we're going through. So with the coronavirus, I think that it has taken, I don't know, a lot of joy from a lot of people, um, depending on your current situation. And I think it's very important that we're all staying safe and social distancing when we can. Wear your mask whenever you're out in public, please. Um, as someone who works in healthcare, I see a lot of people who don't take those precautionary measures um, and it usually does not bode well for them. Um, but with that being said, I saw this cute amigurumi of a coronavirus <laughs> and I thought it was kind of adorable. It's got that little angry face on it. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> I thought it was cute. So the pattern designer is Claire Olivia. Um, and that's her right there. She posted a little blurb here at the beginning. It's kind of like on a blog, um, but it said, I've had a phobia of germs since I was a kid. I remember the swine flu epidemic about 10 years ago. Yeah, I was a nervous wreck. With everything going on lately, it has not been a good couple or a great couple months for someone with severe anxiety. The scary thing about COVID-19 is that it's invisible, so it isn't something you can fight. Uh, it just lurks until it gets you. I thought it could be good exposure therapy exercise to make a crochet version of it. So I really like how she kind of tied mental health into it. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm a therapist. I work in a psychiatric facility and Exposure therapy is something that's really important where we kind of do those things and take on those things that scare us um, in order to kind of desensitize ourselves from it. So she uses this as a way to kind of balance her anxiety and I think it's really cool. Um, and like I said, it is just kind of adorable and it goes step by step. Cause see, it's pretty accurate too cause that's what the actual one looks like. That's a picture from the CDC. Um, but it gives step-by-step -step instructions. Again, the materials that you need, it's worsted weight yarn. It says in two colors, the base, and then the little bobbles or spiky parts that are on there. Um, two plastic safety eyes. Again, 
for the face, a G four millimeter crochet hook, um, and then the polyfill stuffing and the black yarn to do the, the eyes and the little grouchy mouth. I can't do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, super cute. Uh, and I think this was just done at the beginning of this year. Yeah, all the way in March, which is kind of, um, kind of odd because I, where I live in the country, I don't even know if I knew about how serious coronavirus was at the beginning of March. I'm sure I'd heard about it, but I'm sure none of us thought that it would be like it is now. But again, look at that. It's kind of adorable. Um, and if it's something that scares you, it might be good exposure therapy as well. Like I said, I think I'm going to make one. It'll be exposure therapy for me on a couple different levels because I am afraid of COVID-19 in general. But I'm also anxious about doing amigurumi too. So, because I know it's just something that I'm not good at. But that's the good thing about crochet. I always tell myself, if you stress yourself out over a project... Um, or if things get to get get to be too much or overwhelming, just remember that it's yarn. You can pull it out and it'll be fine. It's just string. I've had to tell myself that so many times whenever I'd get overworked with a project. Maybe it was something that was a difficult technique or maybe something that I didn't do correctly. And I would feel myself starting to get worked up and I'd have to tell myself, Zach, it's just yarn. Um, so... Remember that whenever you're going through some of these projects, um, because I think it can be really helpful for us to kind of just center ourselves and be in the present. Um, nothing wrong with that, but also just remember that you're capable of whatever you set your mind to, and you've got to push yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit so you can learn those new skills. I think it's really important. Also, I'm drinking coffee and I'm filming this at, it is currently 1.15 a.m. I don't sleep. Um, this one I absolutely love and it's not new as far as I know, but I saw the picture and I thought it was stunning. It like drew me in right away. I think the model is beautiful. I think the yarn is beautiful. I think the whole cowl is beautiful. It's called the Dottie Cowl. Um, and it is, it looks like it was released by Malabrigo. Um, but it was designed by Lena Fedotova. I don't know if I said that correctly. Um, but look at this picture. Is that not beautiful? I love that. I think she's beautiful, and I think that cowl is beautiful. And they used Malabrigo sock yarn for it. Um, it's just one size. It looks super cozy, though. I mean, look at that. That's great. Looks so warm. Um, the height is, it says 12 and a half inches. The width is 14 and a half inches. Circumference is 29 inches. Uh, so for the yarn amounts, it says that you will need one skein of Malabrigo sock yarn for the main color, and then a second skein of Malabrigo sock yarn uh, for the contrast color. And you don't have to use Malabrigo for this either. Um, just if you want to use a sock yarn or a fingering weight yarn, um, should be fine. I love whenever the blue is on the outside though. That's such a great color. Um, but if you're like me, you may have several fingering weight skeins that you just have singles of. Just find two that kind of complement each other and you could do a really pretty cowl with this. Just make sure that one is probably a lighter color, one's a dark color so that the contrast um, is a lot more sharp and it shows up really neat. But I think that would be great. This is a beautifully written pattern. There's a chart that goes with it. The directions seem easy enough and I am definitely going to be making this for myself because I absolutely love it. Um, it uses a three and a half millimeter hook. Um, and again, I feel like if you have enough yarn, even that can be subjective. Um, or if you wanted to even make this in a DK weight, 
Um, that is my favorite weight of yarn to make projects in. Sometimes uh, you may not like to kind of fool with the really thin yarn, like fingering weight yarn. Um, but if you make it with a DK or a worsted weight, you could just adjust the hook size and it could be even just more cozy or snugly. Um, I don't think it said level. But honestly, guys, it doesn't look any, it doesn't really look difficult. I would say if you're a beginner or advanced beginner, you could probably easily do this pattern. Um, yeah, check that out. Love it. Uh, and this is my last one for the crochet patterns. I saw this and I was just kind of drawn in by the texture of it. It's a shawl. Um, and it was on the Yarn Inspirations website. Um, and it is made with Karen. I think it was Karen One Pound. Yeah. <clears throat> and it says the color they used is Soft Sage, which is like a kind of greeny, I guess, like bluish color. It looks very like turquoisey teal in that. But look at that texture. I'm trying not to shake so much. I saw it online and I was like, ooh, I like that. Um, and it looks pretty simple. It says the skill level is easy. You can make all of this with one ball of Karen One Pound, which is 812 yards. And it says use a eye size hook or a five and a half millimeter hook. Um, to get this done, it's pretty large. And so I don't feel like this project would even take that long. Um, no, no difficult stitches. Um, it says whenever it's done, it will measure about 61 inches wide and 30 and a half inches deep. Uh, instructions and this also comes with a chart if you like charts I like charts because then I don't have to always refer to the pattern sometimes I kind of get lost in the words um, and so a chart is a really good visual for me I will say if you haven't read charts before or if you've been kind of apprehensive about it I was the exact same way so whenever I first started doing crochet first of all I didn't even learn how to read a pattern for probably the first like six months everything I did was through like YouTube tutorials I feel like I really hindered myself in that way. Um, but then I did the same thing once I learned how to read patterns. I was like, oh, I can't do anything that's just a chart because it looks so confusing. But once I learned, I actually kind of prefer it. Um, so again, one of those things, exposure therapy, do the things that scare you, try something new. Could be really good for you. I want to hear about it in the comments. <laughs> um, now this one, or these next couple, few, however many there are, I don't remember, um, are for all of my knitters that are on here. Um, I'm trying to be all inclusive, like I said. I found a lot of really good free patterns for knitting. I feel like there are better free patterns for knitting than crochet, or maybe I just don't know where to look. But I feel like some of these, I'm like, how is this free? Because I feel like it's a lot of work and time that went into it. Um, as someone who's only designed a few patterns, I just, I know how much time goes into some of these things. And I think it's amazing that these designers are able to do this. I think it's really cool. This first one is by uh, Espastrico, and they have a podcast here on YouTube. I don't think they've uploaded in a few months, um, but they're a yarn shop in Canada. I'm not sure what part of Canada they're in. Um, but I watched their podcast, and I'm mildly obsessed I wish they would come back on uh, <laughs> because I'm a fan. But this is called The Classic. Um, it's by Melissa and Mona. They're the two women who own Espastrico. Um, and it's a sweater. It's hard to see because it is dark. They used a very dark yarn. It looks like um, kind of like a faux turtleneck, long sleeve. 
but I kind of love that. If I knew how to knit, this would definitely be something I would do. I don't know if I would make it out of yarn that dark, um, but I think it's beautiful and elegant. Um, it's called the classic. I don't even know. Never even heard of the kind of yarn that they used, but they used, it looks like alpaca and merino blend and a mohair silk blend. I guess that's, a, if you look really closely, you can see that it's kind of fuzzy. It's not my camera. <laughs> it is the yarn on there. Um, 16 inch circular, four millimeter uh, needles for the ribbing and the cuffs, and then a 16, a 24, and 32 inch circular, 4.5 millimeter needles. Um, gauge is 21 stitches and 28 rounds for 10 centimeters uh, after blocking. So, and I have quite a few uh, size options. It looks like there's eight different size options here, which I think is great. Inclusivity is very important. I think whenever you're designing a pattern, um, especially garments, uh, you should want to be as inclusive as possible so more people can make it. I've seen some patterns where people will stop at like large and only have like three or four sizes and I feel like you limit your audience so much or you limit your like, I guess, customer or clientele so much based on there's a lot of people that may need to make big, a uh, size bigger than a large or even a size smaller than a small. I think it's important that you are, um, again, being size inclusive and just being conscious about that whenever you're looking at patterns as well. Um, because it can be very confusing um, to some people, especially whenever there's just, a, you know, extra small, small, medium, large. I actually looked at a pattern um, and decided to not show it on this episode because there were only four sizes available. Um, and if you're like me, a lot of the patterns that uh, I find for sweaters are made for women. And so uh, a lot of times I'm having to make the large size. Um, and I'm not a, a very large man, um, but whenever I'm making female sizes, I size up quite a bit so it fits my my shoulders and my body type, but even the large on this sweater pattern that I had seen did not match um, my chest. And I was like, that's just kind of odd. You would stop at such a small size, um, but that's just me. Random soapbox. Um, <clears throat> this is another knitting pattern. It is the Jasmine Scarf by Pearl Soho. I don't know how um, a lot of you feel about knitting scarves. I know a lot of people say that they get bored with crocheting scarves. I don't know if <laughs> knitters are the same way, but I just thought this, um, the texture in this was really pretty and kind of classic. Um, I just thought it was beautiful and I loved the yarn that they uh, chose for it. Uh, it looks almost braided. But it looks like they did this all the way back in 2015, so you may know about it already. But I was just going through and looking at the free patterns and just kind of uh, getting anything that really caught my eye. Um, but I feel like it is appropriate because it's winter time almost, I guess. It is December. Um, it's not very cold here where I live. We're still in like the 50s and 60s in South Arkansas. But I know some places are already getting snow, so you might want to make a cozy scarf for yourself. Um, let's see, the materials on this one. It said they used uh, three to four skeins of Pearl Soho Flax Down, which is 43% baby alpaca, 42% extra fine merino, and 15% linen. Again, you may not have to use that yarn. 
Um, you could probably make this with anything that's in the right size, I'm sure. Um, but that's probably just what they used for um, their pattern or their version. It does say approximately 876 yards required. It's funny that they put approximately and then give a number so specific as 876 yards. Um, they said US 6 straight or circular needle. I honestly don't know what that means, but if you're a knitter, you probably do. So maybe that will let you know what you need to make this project. Um, the gauge is 24 stitches uh, for four inches in stock and net stitch. Um, and then it's just one size. But I'm sure you could make it as long as you wanted. Yeah, it does say that it's worked over a multiple of 13 plus nine stitches. And so you could just use that uh, equation to make it, make it what you want. But again, I just, I loved it. I loved the texture of it. I thought it was really pretty. Uh, and it may not be one that you have seen before. My last one I thought was really cute too. And again, some of these really make me want to learn how to knit <laughs> because I really wanted to make these because I thought they were super cute. And these are the lambing mitts. And so they're like fingerless gloves. <clears throat> I love that they have them in a few different colors but you'll notice there's like this folded down like flap area that you can pull up to cover your fingers it does still stay open at the end but i just i loved it in the pictures i thought it was so cute look at that i love that that's so awesome if there was a crochet version i would make it i would start it like tonight um but i think that's really cute almost like a brim around the top of the mitt. Um, and it says that it only used 115 to 150 yards of worsted weight yarn. And I know we all have that laying around. Um, they used Peace Fleece. I'm not sure what kind of yarn that is. Um, I've never heard of it actually. Um, and then a US 7 needle. And it comes in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. Um, the finished dimensions are six, seven, and eight inches respectively, the circumference. Um, but yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. 150 yards for both of those mitts. I feel like that's pretty good, right? I don't know though, I guess I'm just used to, that's another thing. I feel like crochet stitches take up so much more yarn than knitting stitches. Um, and I guess they actually do. I'm pretty sure they actually do. Um, so anytime I've talked to some of my knitter friends about how much yarn I would need for like a sweater or a shawl or, you know, anything as far as like yardage is concerned, I doubt I would ever be able to make two gloves with 115 yards of yarn. I just can't see it in my head. Um, not worsted weight. I don't know. Maybe. Um, but the stitches are a lot thicker and so they use more yarn whenever you're crocheting so maybe you can get away with that in knitting I think that's awesome um but that's all I had for today guys I hope that you found something that you enjoyed or that you're going to try um leave a comment down below if you liked these patterns if you have any suggestions for the next free pattern Friday which will take place in two weeks um and if you decide to make any of these, I would love to see how they're turning out. Tag me on Instagram. Uh, I think it would be a lot of fun and I can't wait to do the next one. Like I said, this has been a really good learning experience for me as far as using Ravelry properly um, and just kind of pushing myself out of my comfort zone and learning about new patterns, about new designers, about new things. So. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to hit that subscribe button um, and I will see you next week when I post my next episode of my podcast. Thanks. Bye.